small forms, the spectators never cohere into a fluid group. Marble floor patterns, carpet patterns, gold frames, and screaming red wall coverings make the even image even more unstable, unfocused, ungraspable. In looking at the tribuna, one's eyes race over the canvas, the viewer jumps from fragment to fragment without clear direction. For more than a century, before Zafani's tribuna, artists had portrayed art collections, or Kunstkammer, uh, chambers of art as the subject is termed, and Zafani was certainly familiar with Kunstkammer conventions when he produced his tribuna. Such gallery scenes were common, and the royal collection included one from 1659, most recently attributed to Jacob de Fomentrou, and now on the screen. Complexity was endemic to this genre. Great halls were shown stuffed with masterpieces and curios. But even the most complex of early images of this sort are nowhere near as disjunctive as Zofni's Tribuna. The Foreman Group, for example, surrounds the display of paintings with gray and gold architectural decoration that allows the viewer to isolate the large group of paintings and the angle of the wall at the right offers a clear line of perspective. Furthermore, Fomentru's figures do not conflict with the art that surrounds them. Wilhelm van Gecht the 1628 painting of Cornelius van der Heer's art collection, now at the right, um, is now on the screen, and it is frenetic and as complicated as any Kunstkammer image before Zofany's Tribunal. And even here, in contrast to Zofany's painting, the Van Gecht presents clear perspective lines, a definite box-like space with dominating dark walls that mitigate the complexity of the pictures displayed. Van Gecht's fluent line of figures in the foreground is kept distinct from the artworks, and the plain colored ceiling and floor offer relief from the multitude of objects the glimpses through the windows and doorway in the painting uh, also prevent Van Gecht's painting from becoming an hermetically sealed sardine can. 